Let's carry on with our miscellaneous, like, math whiz, polar form, complex numbers video. That's a bit of a mouthful, but let's carry on. The third topic which I want to talk about is complex conjugates. Now we know that if we have a complex number, z, we can write that in Cartesian form as just x plus iy. And we know that it has the complex conjugate, z star, which is equal to x minus iy. Same real part, negative imaginary part. Now let's actually plot this out and see what it looks like on the complex plane. So we can just quickly draw that out here. Now let's say that here's our point z right here. We can say that this is our x and this is our positive y. Our complex conjugate is x minus iy. So essentially, it's, we go to the right the same amount x, except this time we go down y. And we land up at, like, let's just say this point right here, z star. So if we compare these two points, it's kind of like if we just took our original number and reflected it across the real axis. Now let's take a look at like what this would be if we write it in polar form. In polar form, this would be r times e to the i theta, where this is our r and this is our theta. Now what would the polar form of the complex conjugate be? It actually has the same distance away from the uh, origin, so it has the same r value, or the same magnitude. The only difference is, instead of theta, we're going to have negative theta. Because we always measure theta from like the dependent variable axis, or like the real axis or the x-axis. So we can write the complex conjugate out in polar form as just r e to the negative i theta. So essentially, same real part negative imaginary part, same magnitude, negative phase. Now, one other quick thing I want to talk about with complex numbers is we said way back in the first video that if we have a complex number multiplied by its conjugate, that in like Cartesian form is equal to x squared plus y squared. But this seems relatively familiar. In fact, this is actually equal to r squared. You can multiply these two out in polar form and find it to be true because the exponentials cancel. So we get that, so we can rewrite r, which is our absolute value of a, compl of a complex number, and we can say that this is equal to the square root of the complex number multiplied by its conjugate. And this is fairly handy to keep in mind. The absolute value of the complex number is the square root of that number multiplied by its conjugate. Now we're just going to jump uh, right into our last topic. And the fourth one is... Uh, let's see. Multiplying and dividing complex numbers. So let's say we have one complex number, z1. We can say that this is equal to r1 e to the i theta1. And let's say we have another complex number, z2 is equal to r2 e to the i theta2. Now if we multiply the two complex numbers together, let's see what we get. We get r1 times r2 times e to the i theta1 times e to the i, whoops, theta 2. And we can simplify this up by using our properties of exponents. So we can say that uh, z1 times z2 is equal to r1 times r2 times e to the i theta 1 plus theta 2. So when you multiply two complex numbers, the magnitudes multiply the phases add. Magnitudes multiply, phases add. 
Now let's see what happens when we divide two complex numbers. Z1 divided by Z2. That's just R1 e to the i theta 1 divided by R2 e to the i theta 2, which is equal to R1 divided by R2 e to the i theta 1 minus theta 2. Essentially, the magnitudes divide, the phases subtract. And these are just handy things to keep in mind, especially if you're interested in, like, signal processing or anything like that, where you work with uh, complex numbers or complex functions and signals. Uh, in fact, we can actually rewrite these results in, like, shorthand notation. We can say that the magnitude of z1 times z2 is equal to the magnitude of z1 times the magnitude of z2, then we can say that the phase or argument of z1 times z2 is equal to the argument or phase of z1 plus the phase of z2. Now that's more or less all that I want to try and get to today. That was kind of our big miscellaneous math with polar form of complex numbers. Um, essentially just a bunch of fun facts with complex numbers I just want to like cluster or group all together in one video so I'll see you in the next video